Hey guys, my name is Mo, I produce metal and today we're gonna talk about how to get great sounding low end for your mixes. Starting off, as with anything when it comes to mixing, your final result is only going to be as good as your source material. Here's an example of the guitar DI. So you can hear the tuning is super consistent, it's really well recorded. This gives us a good starting point for having a good sounding low end in the mix. For this mix I'm also layering with MIDI bass. We have a synth growler for the subby lows. And we have a stereo bass track that is not doing too much to the low end, but it has some low mids in it. I have uploaded these tracks to my Patreon as a stem pack, so if you're curious about following along in your own DAW, check that out. Getting more into mixing territory, there is a specific plugin that I absolutely love, which is Unfiltered Audio's Bass Mint. And uh, if you've watched my channel, you know I absolutely love this plugin. It's like magic for uh, the low end. Here I'm going to show you what it's doing to remove the mud on the rhythm guitars. So it's just like magic, right? It's removing some mud between 100 and 300 hertz by the sound of it. I have it here on the bass as well. So it's uh, small increments but together it really adds up. And I've been using this plugin so much that I thought why not use it on the bus as well. So here I have it on the instrumental bus. This plugin has been a game changer for me in terms of getting really clean sounding low end. I printed the mix earlier with no basement on it at all. So yeah, a massive difference and you can get the similar result by using dynamic EQ or by using something like Sooth 2. But this plugin just gets me there so fast and the result is so clean. I absolutely love it. I can't live without it. Next, moving on to a super important thing, especially in modern metal where you really want this super bassy sound but still want the kick drum to punch through. It's ducking. I have a multiband compressor side chained to the drum bus and it's only reacting on the low end, so only reacting to the kick drum. And it's ducking out the bass whenever the kick drum is hitting. A very classic trick. I also have here on the guitar bus the same thing going on but only on the mid channel. To keep the low end very consistent and not get muddy, I'm also ducking out the post production using track spacer here. So the track spacer is side chained to the instrumental bus, being the drums, the bass, and the rhythm guitars. And it's ducking out the post production whenever the instruments are playing. If there is a section with no instruments, I want the bass to shine through in the post production section. So this is just a way to automate it. So now comes the final and potentially most important tip, which is referencing. Reference, reference, reference. I reference so much when I mix. 
it's super important especially for low end because you can really quickly become blind to how loud your low end is or like how punchy the kick drum is you, it's really easy to overdo these things so my advice is to find a really good reference mix and just use that really frequently when mixing and you can check things like how hard the kick drum is punching uh, how consistent the bass is sounding, the overall level of the low end of your mix. What I usually like to do is find a good reference. So here I have another one of my recent mixes that I've done. I then go to the bass region and I only listen to this area. I can then solo the mono channel to see how does the kick drum punch in comparison to the reference mix. When it comes to referencing, it can be a really good idea to also check your mix without the super low bass area, so from like, say, 100 hertz and above. This will allow you to check that your mix sounds punchy even on smaller speakers. A good technique for adding some heft in this area is to use tape saturation. Here you can see I have quite a lot of saturation on the master bus. And finally speaking of bus processing when it comes to bass, you really need to use a bus compressor. I'm just gonna play it without it and then engage it and just hear what happens to the entire mix really, but in particular the way the kick drum is hitting. This is known as pumping the mix, so making the mix drop out a bit where the kick drum hits, it gives it a really big punch. So yeah, those are some tips for getting great sounding low end on your mixes. Let me know in the comments below what you're struggling with when it comes to this, and if you're going to implement any of the techniques from this video. Until next time, see you.